Ah, time for another horror watch. It's the third day. And what's going to be the watch this time? Well, it looks like our next watch is going to be for a monster movie that isn't on the ground, but breaks to ground? By the clown cafe, your favorite meals on wheels. The menu is disgusting and it's full of special deals. Nothing here is good for you, so grab yourself a tray. Cause food's a little funny at the clown cafe. Drop on by the clown cafe. Drop on by the clown cafe. Gobble up your order quick before it runs away Cause food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe Why not visit after school and have yourselves a bite An appetizing appetizer certain to delight We haven't done it right unless it makes your teeth decay Cause food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe Drop on by the Clown Cafe Drop on by the Clown Cafe The grub is downright gruesome but your appetite's obey Cause food's a little funny Food's a little funny Food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe Hey everyone, it's Don G. Corleone here and I'm here with a brand new movie review and this movie review is going to be episode three of halloween horror movie reviews season four so what's the episode going to be this time well this episode is not a requested movie it was a movie i thought of myself and from what i've heard this is another one of empire fan productions favorite films of all time and uh it's not a huge grocer it's not a film from steven spielberg it is a campy monster flick. And this is a monster flick that's set underground, not on the ground. And it's also spawned a lot of sequels. And it stars Kevin Bacon. That film is going to be for none other than 1990s Tremors. So what's the plot of this movie? Well... A small town gradually becomes aware of a strange creature which picks off people one by one. But what is this creature and where is it? At the same time, a seismologist is working in the area and she detects tremors. The creature lives underground and can pop up without warning. Now trapped in her town, the townsfolk have no escape. So that's the plot of the movie. How is this movie made? Well, the cause of the tremors was conceived originally in the early 1980s when writers... As Will S.S. Wilson and Brett Maddock were working in the United States Navy as filmmakers in charge of creating educational safety videos. And while getting footage, the two climbed a large desert boulder and asked the question, what if there was something that wouldn't let us off of this rock? And that's where the two to start brainstorming ideas for a monster movie, which was originally going to be dubbed Land Sharks. And they shared their idea to their friend Ron Underwood, who was working with National Geographic as a documentary director and used his knowledge of zoology to better develop the land sharks into creatures that could realistically exist. And after their script for another film they were involved in Short Circuit spawned to be a major box office hit, Wilson and Maddox quickly began, quickly began shopping around their idea for Tremors. The name Land Sharks was changed only to a then-popular Saturday Night Live sketch featuring a character of the same name, the original screenplay, which was titled Beneath Perfection, was finished in June 1988. Then when it came to filming Tremors, filming began in early 1989 and it lasted over 50 days. Principal photography took place around Lone Pine, California and the isolated community of Darwin, California, 
which the crew liked because of its similarities in the fictional town of Perfection, Nevada. The town, which was entirely a set, was built near Olanca, California. The, mountain in the, the mountains in the distance at the Sierra Nevada and Owens Lake is visible in the background during the film's climax. When it came to the creature design, the creature for Tremors was designed by our Amalgamated Dynamics, and the full-skilled grab Graboid seen after being dug up by Valus gas and lightweight foam. It was placed in a trench and buried and dug up to achieve the desired used effect. So, after the film Tremors was completely finished and marketed, Tremors would go on to be released by Universal Pictures in January 1990, and it is and it would go on to be the first installment of the Tremors franchise because this movie got followed by five direct video sequels and one prequel. And that was Tremors 2 Aftershocks in 1996, Tremors 3 Back to Perfection in 2001, Tremors 4 The Legend Begins in 2004, Tremors 5 Bloodlines. What's with all these five movies and horror franchises being called Bloodlines in the 2010s? There was Rontor 5 Bloodlines and then Tremors 5 Bloodlines. Then Tremors A Cold Day in Hell 2018, and then Tremors Shrieker Island in 2020. In a television series titled Tremors, the series aired from March through, through August of 2003. The second television series was even going to air in 2018 after a pilot had been shot with Baker repressing his role for the first time since the first film. <coughs> but multiple networks, including the Sci-Fi Channel, passed on the series. And at the box office, the movie was only a monster hit at the box office. But that didn't stop Tremors going on to become a massive hit on home video purchases, rentals, and television, becoming, and it became one of the most rented films in 1990. And because of this, it's gained a very large call following over the years. As for my reaction, well, I've already said, guys. I heard a while back this was one of Empire Fan Productions' favorite movies of all time, and, favorite monster, and one of his favorite monster movies of all time. So I was curious for a while in checking this one out, especially considering the fact that Empire Fan Productions is one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. Although, I was always too busy to do so, until last night that was. I finally watched it for episode 3 of Halloween Horror Movies Season 4. How was it? It's a masterpiece! In every way! I can definitely see why Empire Fan Productions really loves this film, and quite a few other YouTubers I like really love this film. If you're looking for a good monster movie, Tremors is another great one. But if you're looking to be scared, you'll be disappointed. It took a lot of creativity to pull off what they did in Tremors. They took this seemingly unrealistic situation with these giant worms and they made it believable. The cast performed as if they were in a real life situation being chased by these big worms and then you cheer along with them and feel their frustration. The special effects that were pulled off almost flawlessly, making the movie just that much more believable. Tremors is often reasonably described by many to be a cult, cl cult classic, which is odd, because the fact is cult films usually have a quirky quality to them that separate them from the usual Hollywood Sherman's machine. So other films like Reanimator, Inter, another film which has oddities and bloody quirks that average viewers might find re repell repellent, but Tremors isn't the slightest bit offbeat. It's made a full Hollywood style for predictably happy ending to boot. So what makes it a cult classic? Could it be that it's successful in mixing almost every genre to the proceedings, or that it's great entertainment that simply didn't get the box office reception it deserved? Perhaps both. Because this is one movie that always puts a... Because this is definitely a movie that, upon first watch, put a smile on my face. It got... It definitely got my... self pounding every time I watched it. And the plot is similar to that of the monster films of the oldies, like... Old days, like Valentin McKee, played by Kevin Bacon, and Earl Bassett, played by Fred Ward, are two handymen trapped in a small town of perfection, Nevada. And they have dreams of making it big, but their ambitious goals always seem out of reach. And just when they do decide to finally leave, discovery of dead bodies, both human and animal, keeps them there for just a while longer. There's also the road, which has been blocked off by a large boulder. And one... And on, on one hand, to study some strange seismic activity is Ronda, played by Finn Carter, a grad student who helps McKee and Bassett come to the realization that both the dust and the odd vibrations to the ground are connected. It turns out to be the work of giant 30-foot worms, four of them to be exact, and they trap the townspeople perfection on their homes, so including Gun Happy, World War Three prepared couple Burton and Heather Gummer, who are played by Michael Gross and Reverend McTenner, the center, and the rest of the film becomes a desperate scramble to outsmart the worms and get out of the town alive. And the first thing noticeable about Tremor is probably because of 
how it's obviously inspired by 50s monster flicks, and the great thing though is Tremors plays itself as a comedy, preferring laughs over scares. And it's a wise decision since if the film took itself seriously, it would have probably been a major detriment. Detriment. The laughs aren't cheap either, as they result from witty dialogue and new twists of the monster subgenre. The great chemistry between Bacon and Ward brings the most humor to the film, and playing best friends with little education but plenty of smarts. And there are two performances that are who to watch. And it, it's a shame they didn't really they don't reunite in Tremors 2, apparently. Apparently, Kevin Bacon's character doesn't come back for the sequels. Apparently, I've heard most of the, the rest of them as just Fred Ward's character. But in addition to the laughs, there's also the action, which is frenetic and exciting. Director Ron Underwood gives the film a lighting pace and 95 minutes seems to just roll by. And the fun action consists of a lot of running and get off the ground moments. And for the last 45 minutes, Tremors is almost full of nonstop excitement. And it's surprising to see that the action never gets tiresome nor dull for a single moment. The movie is definitely not scary or frightening at all. But it's with suspense and thrills this sharp. Who, who really cares? Because besides... This film's not intended to be scary at all. That's hardly the film's intention. There's, there's usually two ways to make a good monster movie. Slow-paced and suspenseful, or fast-paced and surprising. Tremors definitely opts for the layer for the latter method. The producers almost managed to assemble an excellent cast, all of whom established their individual characters with admirable clarity. Not only Mindy, the young girl, comes off as kind of a siffer, plus the exception of Kevin Bacon and Michael Gross, they all look like real people. The spotlight even gets shared out pretty equally among the cast as well. And one particular nice touch was the fact that our two main heroes weren't the only people in town to have any comp competency at all. Like Fred, Fred Ward, Kevin Bacon are the two that really carry this movie. But it's more because of the great screen chemistry between them. Miguel has the better ideas, and Birkin contributes more to the actual destruction of the monsters. And while Tremors definitely never really cheats the audience, such as set up a situation and then not really deliver, the movie does very teasingly from the expected. One of the aspects I even enjoy the most about showing this film for first time viewers is how the movie fools them about things like who gets eaten and who doesn't and how the worms actually operate. What really also makes Tremors work as a movie is the other characters in the movie. You act, they actually, they're not just, they're not idiots in this movie. They actually come across as real people trapped in an insane situation and all of them have a lot of good charisma. Even though the film doesn't have tons of character developments, Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward are a hoot of pair of, as a pair of low-rent handymen who become reluctant heroes, and the byplay the by between the two is a lot of fun. And usually, movies, a movie like this would usually revolve around stupid people doing stupid things, just to raise the body count. Tremors is much different. Tremors doesn't do that shit. The characters react believably, they do smart things to try and escape and are kill the graboids. The creatures too are also fairly smart and are not just mindless eating machines with no brains like they probably would be if this be portrayed as if this film were made today. There's many other great things too about this movie. The music, hugely underrated. The music in Tremors is pitch perfect and oddly catchy. The country flavor instrumentals are neither overbearing nor hooky. They just provide a little background atmosphere when required. And even the obligatory, we got a country singer in the cat, the cast letter bust over a tune in the credits. It isn't too bad, and I, it isn't too bad. And this is coming from someone who's not really a big fan of country music. And the camera work, again, this doesn't get its due. There are some effective wide shots of the town that manage to show all the residents at once while stranded on their rooftops. With some nifty zooms and close-ups at relevant points and some nice scented vis vistas of the incredible mountain features near perfection, especially in the closing half hour of the film as the survivors move along with the bulldozer. <coughs> when it comes to the effects of the film, Tremors was made long before CGI was even widespread, so the filmmakers wisely came up with various low-key yet effective methods to highlight the menace, size, and speed of the graboids without having to show them too frequently. And remember, they live under the ground, so most of the time, it wasn't too hard to justify not seeing them. And in the brief scenes, where they're spotted cruising near the rocks while Val, Earth and Rhonda are stranded on top, and the initial arrive in perfection, the graboids are immaculate and never less than believable. And the effects guys, they sensibly mix up the techniques frequently, so nothing becomes stale or obvious. There's at times there, there are shots from Graboid Eye View, 
and occasional money shots where they leap out of the ground to attack and devour victims looks very effective. Now when it comes, now I've not mentioned Ron Underwood's direction most in most of this review. Ron Underwood finally directs this film. He takes obvious inspirations from John Carpenter or Sam Raimi along the way. There's several gorgeous wide shots of the deserts, something you'd print off and hang up on your wall. The sound design is also fantastic. The monsters locate prey by keying in our sounds of vibration. The movie is mostly silent except for loud burst noise, and most edits come from silence, loud, silence to loudness. It's genuine attention to detail like this that makes Tremor such an enjoyable experience. <coughs> And then he also got the monsters who are trying to rain terror on the trap few left in town. And why they started the attacks is never really addressed, but who cares? Because the terrible fun is just beginning. And it's better you don't know why they're there. The monsters are essentially big worms that can, that can outrun a human or a horse underground. They're big, smelly, disgusting in a good way. And apparently quite smart for at least for a worm. But just, or just as sounds their primary means of sense, it's also Urbana's loud noise, which will, will cause him to run for a short while anyway. And without giving too much, like, you can definitely say that noise would end up turning to be their final downfall. Spoiler alert. Right there, for those who have not seen the film. And much of the fun with this film comes from the verbal pot, pot shots that nearly everyone takes at each other. Val Earl are working buddies and very brother-like and are therefore compelled to rib one, to rib one another at the other's expense. Fence, although they are always there for each other too. And the opening of the film sets the mood for the rest of what forsake my word for it, or definitely watch for your although you definitely gotta watch this movie for yourself to know more. Oh wait a minute. The gore factor. I almost forgot about the gore factor. Well <coughs> me. Well, it is a horror monster movie, and so there is gonna be some. That being said. I'll definitely tell you that the blood and guts are mostly from the giant worms, not really the victims, or as they call them, the graboids. And they're not really all that realistic. Messy, yes. Real, no. Also, it's usually all being done in good humor, and under the good guy and bad guy war worm theme, so everyone will catch on virtually. And how's the, epic fin how's the finale of this movie? Hell, I think this film has one of the most epic finales of any monster movie, because how the finale goes is, after our three leads return to town, the worms attack and kill gen the general store owner, Walter Chain, forcing everyone to hide on the town's various rooftops. I mean, however, then, meanwhile, survivalist couple Bert and Heather Gummer, Gummer manage to kill one of the creatures after unwillingly luring it to their basement armory, and it's how the two remaining worms attack the building foundations, knocking over a trailer belonging to Nestor before dragging him under and devouring him. And realizing they cannot stay in the town any longer, Earl, Rhonda, and Nigel distract the monsters while Val commanders a track loader and chains the semi-trailer to the rear. The survivors then use it to try to escape to a nearby mountain range, and en route, the war both worms create a sinkhole trap that disables the track loader, and the survivors flee to some nearby builder boulders for safety. Earl then has an idea to lure in the worms and trick them into swallowing Bert's homemade pipe bombs. And the strategy successfully kills one worm, but the last one spits a bomb back towards the survivors, and it forces them to disperse so the explosion destroys all but one of the remaining bombs. So what do they do now? Well, Val now has no choice but to lure the final worm to chase him to the edge of a cliff and explodes the remaining bomb behind it, frightening the worm into changing through the cliff race, where it plummets to its death onto the rocks below. And it <coughs> Bloods below, and the worms are finally destroyed. And after finally destroying the final worm and frightening it and causing it to plummet to its death on the rocks, the group then returns to town and they call in the authorities to begin an investigation while Earl encourages Val to pursue a romantic relationship with Rhonda. And it ends right there. The worms are defeated. It's a definite ending and I really like that. There was no jump scare. It was not some downer end. It's not a sequel baiting ending. The monster is defeated. The monsters are defeated. <coughs> and Val and Rhonda will become a couple. There is no better way to end this movie. Very perfect way. Would I have a nitpick with Tremors, though? Well, 
I will say, I've already said this in the, around the beginning of the review, but I'll say it again. Once again, if you are expecting a scary monster movie, sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not going to be in here if you're expecting something like that. Because this is supposed to be a campy monster movie with comedic action elements. Although some people seem to really consider it a horror movie. And I'm not sure why they do, but... Maybe because it's got giant worms, but... And while the ending was pretty definitive, this movie did spawn some sequels. I hear Tremors 2 is decent, but apparently the same can't be said for the rest that come after that. So I guess I'll only watch the second one then. If I plan to watch the follow-ups, I guess I'll just watch Tremors 2 and avoid the rest. However, I think that's it for bad qualities because... I think Tremors most of the time is a flawless film that deserves all the praise it gets and to this various day still deserves all the praise it gets. So in the end, I would highly recommend watching and buying Tremors for your Blu-ray shelf because it is that phenomenal the whole way through. Anyways, that's it for my view of Tremors. And you're wondering how I'm going to rate Tremors. Here's how I'm going to rate this movie. So overall, if you are a fan of campy B monster movies or 90s monster movies in general, then I would highly recommend watching and buying Tremors, no doubt, because it deserves to be a part of your collection without a doubt. And if you're wondering how I'm going to rate Tremors, I'm going to give Tremors a damn 10 out of 10. There we go. There are some of my review for Tremors. And um, what's going to be... The next episode, well, our next episode, we're going to be going to another film that has spawned, also spawned a number of direct-to-DVD sequels, except this one's from the 2000s, and it's one of those cannibal films that was kind of similar to The Hills Have Eyes. Yes, guys, our next episode is going to be Ron Turn, and this one is also one I thought of for this season myself. So this one's also not going to be a requested one. Because some there were some movies I actually thought of. I actually thought of for my... this. I managed to think of a few movies myself for this season. So not every one of these is going to be a requested one. But, yeah, but anyway, guys, I'm uh, about to go finish, re -de finish off decorating the rest of this place for Halloween. Until then, guys, that'll be it for this review or episode. Thank y'all for watching. If you like this, want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Donji Corleone.